Yo, what is going on guys? I'm Alfie and Delete and welcome to a Stellaris playthrough where we are going to be playing with a xenophobic species and we're going to be trying to conquer the galaxy. Now, this was no easy task for me. This is definitely a different play style than what I'm used to, but I guarantee you there was a lot of action-packed stuff happening in this run. Things from crisis to wars and trying to mingle with other empires and so hopefully you guys enjoy the run. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. We are starting on a planet called Tactera. Our origin is the under one rule origin. And the main thing I want to point out is that we are playing with the heroic past. Now, speaking of our leader, we have Maximus Vanguard, who is our supreme commander, who was born on the planet Tactera. He grew up learning the art of war and leadership, and from a young age, he showed exceptional skills in tactics and discipline. His journey led him through the renowned tactical academies. All right, and so we are starting off in the middle of the galaxy. I am playing on a small galaxy as well, but this pretty much looks like a good spot right in the middle of a cluster. The first thing I want to look for are any habitable worlds that are nearby, and I can see that we already have two right next to my home planet. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my science ship, I'm going to send them to start surveying nearby, and then we're going to start selecting some technology to research. Alright, so next up, I'm going to start by refitting my ships in case we make first contact with any hostile species so that I'm prepared for any action that may go down right off the bat. And I'm going to change my ship design to screen so that we can defend ourselves from early game hostile weapons. After that, we're going to go to our policies and edicts. And one thing I want to make sure is that our economic policy is set to militarized economy so that we can gain more alloys early on and use those alloys to build fleets and defensive platforms. After that, I'm going to add a new trait to Maximus Vanguard, and we're going to go with, uh, let's try the Eye for Talent so we can get some more XP. After that, I'm going to be looking towards Hostility so that we could get some more ship weapon damage and army damage. And then lastly, the only option is Strategist for our veteran class. Now for our first contact protocols, I believe it would be wise for us to be cautious. This makes it so that other nations will make it harder to establish communications with us. After that, we're going to select our first tradition. And the first one I'm looking at is Prosperity. This says that there is no better indicator of success or failure of a star nation than the strength of its economy. This is also going to give me a mining station output modifier. After that, we have The Promise. This says the Supreme Commander Maximus Vanguard put an end to our internal strife and brought about the unification. Now he came to power on a platform of patriotic unity and imperialism promising to lead us into the stars and create a grand galactic empire. Today, our people grow impatient and descendant voices question our leadership abilities. The council has prepared several 40 year plans that will put these doubts to rest and propel us into the next age of our species. Let's get to work. All right, and so after a while, I've started to travel around with my fleets just to explore and find planets nearby. We find a couple of archaeological dig sites, which early on in the game, I usually don't explore just yet. I leave those behind later on since they take a little bit of time to research. And we find a planet to colonize. And I'm going to name our first world Kodraka. This is a size 14 planet, which could be very useful to us. And a couple of months later, we are already set to claim the world. This new colony is the first step towards fulfilling the Supreme Commander's promise. The colony ship has been permanently converted into an administrative headquarters of the new settlement. Now, after we colonize the planet, it says that the new cities built on Kadraka are a sight to behold. Through grit and determination, the colonists have managed to thrive on a new world. Tactician citizens on Kadraka decided to show their loyalty by erecting a monument to honor Supreme Commander Maximus Vanguard, and we're going to let them work on it. Now, a couple of months later, every state-owned screen in the Tactical Union interrupts its scheduled stream to broadcast an official communication from the planet Kadraka. Today, we have made history. Never before has our species realized a grander achievement. With my guidance, with your hard work, no obstacle shall stand in our way. The colonists of Kadraka wish to honor me, and I thank them. Glory to the Tactical Union. And that's when it happens. We make first contact. 
Now towards the north, uh, our first contact situation has been aborted. There are three empires that are above us and I'm automatically going to assume they are a federation. For starters, we have the Vim Confederacy, then we have the Bonded Merchants Empire and the Serene Mandate. Now, most of these empires are pacifist, so worrying about war right now is not a huge deal with them, but right away, I go ahead and I start building spite networks on them because I wanna find out what their relative power is. And if we get the chance, I would like to attack them. Now, they've already started to clearing me a rival, and so I'm preparing for the worst. And since I found this federation, now a faction has formed, and it looks like most of their issues revolve around me asserting my dominance around them and probably trying to conquer these empires. Now after this, I'm going to launch the Expand the Council agenda. I want to get more leaders on my council. And next up, we have Maximus Vanguard, who has the Prospecting Insight. It says, our prospectors proved themselves useful once again. They reported finding a hidden underground deposit of several unusual resources. While we work to ascertain the properties and potential for these new assets, we can continue to expand in other areas. And so I say we are closer to the goal. Now, finding these three empires right off the back is going to change my plan for what I select for my next tradition. And I'm going to go with Supremacy so that we can start building up some fleet power. After that, I'm going to jump over to my edicts and I'm going to unlock Fortify the Border. This will add two more star bases to my capacity and it'll allow me to build star bases 50% faster. Next up, I kind of got indecisive. And so I was like, all right, I wanted to go with Supremacy, but I also want to be able to defend myself. And so we're going to go with the Unyielding Tradition. This says the galaxy is vast and full of dangers, which it is. And so I want to be able to defend myself and for good reason because there are empires that are preparing to declare war on us now at the time i didn't realize it but they can't attack me so i really don't have anything to worry about but i was still a little paranoid from seeing that alert and so i started building defensive platforms around the perimeters of my borders and plugging in each and every choke point that leads from my system to theirs i also went to the ship designer and i started refitting my defensive platforms and changing them into carriers because usually in the early game a lot of empires will only have smaller ships and the carrier will be able to take those on and so i'm going to be adding mostly armor to these defensive platforms and early on in the game i'm going to be building a lot of these now for our next agenda since we have started the unyielding tradition tree i'm going to go with impenetrable borders and this just pretty much adds a couple of modifiers to my star base hull points and things like that with me having an empire getting ready to declare war on us we make first contact with the united yuri union these are honor bound warriors and so right off the back this is kind of making me a little nervous. We got a lot of hostile looking empires at my borders and they oppose our ethics. And so this is tricky. And here's the opinion map mode to show you what these other empires think of me. If their color is yellow, they're kind of neutral towards us, but if it's red, they hate us. And of course, this new empire we find declares me a rival as well. And so now I'm really on the edge, but talk about perfect timing. We find some raiders. Now, the raiders are gonna be perfect because for every empire that declares me a rival, I can use them to raid my rivaling empire. And so I reach out to them and I'm like, hey, we want you to attack one of our rivaling empires. I send them to attack, let's say the Federation. I pay 3000 energy credits for it and they're gonna send a fleet up to the north. Now, while all this is going on, I'm like, hey, let's just put all of our focus into the unyielding tradition tree. I want to build up my defensive platforms. I want to keep adding more defensive bases and making my any choke points that lead to other empires as strong as possible. We end up finding another hostile empire that we're starting first contact with. And now we have the political frontier situation. This says that we've established factions and fledging movements alike that have taken an unusually keen interest in our new colony that we've colonized, Santrinus. Now, from the moment we announced the settlement of this modest planet, nearly every political voice on the tactical union has something to say about it. All right, so now we've made contact with another empire and it's not looking good. More honorbound warriors. We have the Rathelian hegemony. And so now I am completely surrounded by hostile empires. And so uh, they immediately start making claims on my systems and I'm taking this as a threat. I'm glad I started with the unyielding tradition tree because like I said, I'm just working on plugging in my defensive platforms. And now I'm to the point where I'm like, you know what? Let's not wait. If they're gonna prepare to declare war on me, let's just turn the speed up. And so I kind of, I, I realize I made a mistake here, but I attacked the Federation first. I, I'm putting all my points into, now back into supremacy. I'm like, help me, help me. And well, I'm actually doing pretty solid. I'm, I'm going to war with these guys and I'm, I'm kind of containing the threats. Battles are going down at my borders. I built these defensive platforms so that I could have my fleets fight around them. And we're actually taking the fight to the Federation. And so while this is happening, 
the Rathelians on the other side declare war on me. And so they're trying to attack my starbase, and at this point I'm sweating because my fleets are on the other side attacking the Federation to the north, the Rathelians are on my right side, and they, as you can see here, they're, they're starting to attack us. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to the Federation that I'm at war with. We're gonna settle the status quo. No systems were lost, none were gained. And so it's kind of like a standstill. And now I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and send my ships back over to the right side of my borders. Since they have taken one of my bases, we finally get there. They've taken about two of my bases. And I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of stressing at this point because I'm like, hey, I'm, 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 I need help. And so I start building more gun batteries. I start upgrading more defensive platforms, more deeper inside of my borders. And here's a crucial battle that takes place because like I said, if, if I would have lost this battle, I probably would have just probably lost the game at this point. But hey, if you are going up against a stronger empire, build defensive platforms. And this is a good reason why. They had higher fleet power than we did. We declared them a rival. And I mentioned earlier, that we had the Raiders right by us. And so I'm going to hire them right off the back to attack the Rathelian hegemony. And that could give us a, a potential edge in this battle. And so now they're being attacked from two fronts. They're still trying to get past my defensive platforms. DPs win games, all right? And so I'm continuing down the supremacy tradition tree uh, and I have my first Ascension perk. Now, for the first Ascension Park, I didn't really see anything that really helped me out, and so I went with one vision to build up some unity. And what lies ahead says that despite our Supreme Commander's work, there's still much work to be done. The Empire consists of conflicting factions, and the population is united only through the constant effort of the Supreme Commander. Although our Supreme Commander did not wish to change the post-unification government, a new, more direct approach could remedy some of these problems. On the other hand, such a decision may encounter significant opposition. I do the unthinkable. I proclaim the imperial rule. Now, this is going to lead me through all sorts of problems, but uh, yeah, it says that this will strengthen Maximus Vanguard's rule, but might have some dire consequences in the future. All right, and so now we are a despotic empire, and yeah, we just changed up everything, and now we're gonna continue with this war. I managed to take back the base that they took from us before, but why stop there? We got the advantage here. Their fleets have been weakened. This was a huge victory for us. And now we are going to push into Rathelian territory. Okay, so now we have the Imperial Proclamation. And it says that the news spread like wildfire. A few official signatures later, and a grand concentration ceremony was broadcast to the nation. The majority of the tacticians are happy that Emperor Maximus Vanguard will now have full control of the state. Meanwhile, the battle continues on. We managed to take a second system from the Rathelian. And I'm like, hey, look, I need a break. We're both at 100% war exhaustion, and I claim and conquer two of the Rathelian systems. All right, and so time has passed. War continues. We just go back and forth between the Federation. We go to war with the Rathelians. It's nonstop. I expand my borders a little bit. We make first contact with a couple of more empires. And now I have started down the Animity Tradition Tree, especially since we have so many rivaling empires. Uh, I have my third Ascension perk, which, uh, let's see... I'm gonna go with Synthetic Evolution. I like the idea of us going cyborgs. And we have two relics as well. I've been using the Defragmenter, and uh, this just gives me a little extra energy credit upkeep. Uh, I have a couple of robots as well, and so I think this all benefits us. We also find a Torian, who is a renowned paragon. And of course, I'm going to enlist this guy. This is perfect for my empire. Uh, we have new species, uh, which I have to make them all residents. All right, so then we have a speech. Speech. Speech! Fellow tacticians, today, I, Maximus Vanguard, want you to know that I am filled with pride. As a people, we have come together, and despite our differences, we have ventured into the unknown. I want to acknowledge your- <coughs> I want- I want- The Emperor suddenly staggers out of view. And so now I see the situation that says, the fall happens in 30 days. What could this be? Is the Emperor sick? All right, and so the fall, it says, the news didn't take long to spread among the population. The Emperor is dying. We have to let the Emperor rest. They need the rest they deserve. They have ruled this empire for quite some time. And so the Luminary is gone. No one lives forever. In the end, we are all equals in death. Today, the Luminary unites us all one last time. Here we have Empress Bimelona, and she is set to rule the Tactical Union. Now, her rule is going to start with us at war, 
with one of our neighboring empires who we are actually winning with. Uh, we're actually gonna go ahead and finish the prosperity tradition tree as well. And for our next ascension perk, I'm just gonna go with galactic contender so that we can get some diplo weight and we can do some damage to end game territories. Uh, while, meanwhile, the empress is continuing bombarding our neighboring empire so that we can conquer them. Uh, right now we're at war with the great Makru resume. And so they're not necessarily a incredibly strong empire, but something starts to spawn up in the galaxy. Uh, we have the galactic community that's formed already. And a thing we're focusing on at the moment is the Rakthalnak Executioner Empire. They've become a crisis aspirant. And I love when crisis spawn in the game. We're not gonna do anything. We're gonna use them to our advantage. And so while we're at war with the Great Macro Empire, war has completely broken out across the galaxy because the galactic community has declared them a crisis. And so again, yes, we are just gonna sit back, watch all this chaos and sure, and we're to make our moves silently, but violently. And so we won our war against the Great Macro Empire, and now I'm gonna be picking and choosing which empire that I wanna to go to war next. Now I'm watching all of their ships begin to go up north. Uh, I'm kind of messing around with my planets. At this point, I have about 15 worlds under my control. We have unemployed pops all over the place, and so it's just a lot of micromanaging, but uh, I'm now in the adaptability tree as well, and we're getting closer to finishing that. And one of my favorite things is ring worlds. We have found one, we are getting ready to colonize it. Uh, I am reforming the governments. I add masterful crafters to my empire. And uh, now, nah, yeah, just kind of just doing some micromanaging at this point. Uh, we find pre FTLs on a on that ring world that I mentioned earlier. And so uh, one thing that kind of sucks is that in the galactic community, sometimes the AI kind of votes on silly laws here. And uh, I had to change my uh, it's my pre FTL interference policy, which puts me in and breach of galactic law, which no biggie. Uh, I'm willing to risk that to get this ring world, and that's going to further boost the economy of my empire. And so uh, throughout the game, I was kind of struggling a little bit with that. Uh, we select the Harmony Tradition next after completing the Adaptability Tree, and it's just things are going pretty smooth. Now, uh, after the Galactic Community has uh, pretty much smashed the crisis, uh, I'm going to try to subjugate the Great Yuri Empire. That's this red border. I'm, I'm making claims on their systems as well because I want some of their systems too. And I, I'm, be, I'm at this point, I'm starting to become a warmonger. I mean, I'm just going to admit it. I wanted to conquer some more. I wanted to take some more systems. And I wanted to start setting myself up for the end game. And so my borders, I, I got my fleets moving to my defensive bases at my borders. Here, uh, I am not the uh, one of the. All right. So at this point, the galactic community is starting to denounce me. They're doing whatever they can to decrease my diplo weight. They're trying to discredit our empire's name. And I'm like, hey, no worries. You guys keep doing that. I'm going to start subjugating now. And so there it is. We're at war with the Yuri Empire. I send my fleets in and we steamroll these guys. This is one of their strongest bases. I take it down. There goes one of their fleets. They get smashed and it's rinse and repeat. We move through. We smash the next base and the galactic community declares another empire a crisis. This is perfect. And so I'm trying to use my Galactic Council powers here to uh, just veto any kind of denouncements that they make against us. And below us, we have the Avalonians. I tried to uh, denounce them as well. And just I'm, I'm just trying to uh, sabotage the Galactic community and things like that. And so uh, after a while, uh, we end up actually smashing the uh, Yuri Empire. And now my borders have expanded further. A little bit of border gore there, but no worries. That yellow border up above, that is all me. That's my subject. My borders have expanded. I'm growing stronger, but the Belmacosa Crusaders, that's that blue border towards the north. Those are the crisis. They're going a little wild right now. And yeah, like I said, I'm just watching. I'm watching how the galaxy adapts to it. We finished the adaptability tradition tree. And so now I get my fifth ascension perk. And I'm gonna go with Grasp the Void because I've really been depending on the defensive platforms. And so after that, I have one more tradition to select. And honestly, I was kind of waiting to get the uh, synthetic tradition tree, but I didn't want to waste time not having a tradition. So I just go with, I just go with the harmony tree. 
Uh, we start going through and researching Astral Rifts, which is really fun. But something that I love the most, and one of my favorite things, is the Sleepers Awaken. And so it began as a subtle shift in the Hyderian behavior, scattered reports of their ships once rarely seen outside their own space now being spotted in remote systems all across the galaxy, highly advanced scouting vessels visiting ancient ruined worlds, refusing all hails, and fleeing when attacked, gathering information from their return to the galactic stage. Now, pretty much a fallen empire has awakened, and they are starting to get active in their borders, here are the Clan Ancients. Uh, they're getting riled up with the Hyderian Reclaimers, which are both sort of in the center of the galaxy here. I haven't surveyed some of the systems in between them because the Clan Ancients kind of block my path to the northern section of the galaxy. All right, so then something scary happens. We have the Galactic Power Surge, and this says that instruments across the Tactical Union have suddenly picked up a subspace power surge of massive proportions coming from somewhere within our galaxy. And of course, if you guys didn't know what that means, the in-game crisis has spawned. Now, where they spawned was crucial. We get a little bit more information about the Galactic Power Surge, and check this out. Here they are. Uh, I'm gonna say you're just a wretched Xeno. And I mark my words, that was probably the worst thing I could say, because these guys are right in the middle of my freaking border. Oh my goodness, the Glad Custodian's like, oh hey, we'll help you out. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever, you can't help us out right now. They are going to bop us. And so we have the Unbidden, we have their Dimensional Portal. I try to avoid direct fleet on fleet action, but they're literally one system right away from my home system. And so while I'm trying to get away, it's too late. They send over 5 million worth of fleet power right into my home system and it smashes me. It crumbles me. I, I didn't know what to do. And so at this point, I was just like, you know what? One of my favorite things about Stellaris, win, lose, draw. This is the fun of the game. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this run. I'm Alfie Delete, and this is the Stellaris Tactical Union playthrough.